Hi, my name is Christophe Genevemeta. I'm a PhD student in Capsule team at Inuir REN. I work on machine learning with rational analysis with Annie Leoser and Benoit Gerard. I will present a work called Trace to Trace Translation for Side Channel Attack. First, a little introduction about Side Channel Attack. Imagine you have a cryptographic algorithm running on a device. This cryptographic algorithm takes as input a plain text and produces as output a ciphertext. During the execution of this cryptographic algorithm, the device provides different side channels, such as electromagnetic emission, power consumption, timing, thorn, or heat. These side channels are linked to the internal state processing of the device. In our experiment, we use the EM emission and power consumption. Thus, in our case, an attacker can capture several traces of electromagnetic emission and power consumption and use some mathematical tool, such as a correlation, to discover sensitive information. Depending on the context and the capability of the attacker, he can proceed in different ways. First, the attacker can acquire an unlabeled dataset. An unlabeled dataset is a dataset composed of a set of traces without knowledge or having the corresponding key or intermediate target value. When an attacker has an unlabeled dataset, he can perform a non profile attack. The non profile attack consists in using some statistical tool and some knowledge to discover the key. As example, he can use the correlation or the difference between two sets of traits. Secondly, the attacker can acquire a label dataset. A label dataset is a dataset composed of a set of traits with their corresponding key. <coughs> when an attacker has a label dataset, he commands a more powerful attack. This attack is called profile attack. The profile attack consists in estimating the linkage model and then use it to guess the key on the device to target. The two main profile attacks are template attack and more recent attack based on deep learning. The profile attacks are more efficient than non-profile attack. One limitation is one limitation is that deep learning based such an attack requires more data than a classical profile attack. In our work, we focus on the profiling attack with deep learning technique and motivate to overcome this limitation. Let us introduce a notion from artificial intelligence. In the case we have two datasets coming from different settings, then either the two datasets share the same intermediate target value, in which case they are called paired dataset. Or the two datasets do not share the same intermediate target value and then are called unpaired dataset. We need paired dataset to apply the technique we present. The regular approach for deep learning based such an attack consists in using two datasets, a profiling set and an attack set. The profiling set is a labeled dataset with many traits obtained from different keys. Generally, the profiling set comes from a clone of the device to target. The attack set is an unlabeled dataset with a certain number of traits and fixed unknown key. It comes from the device to target. We use the profiling set to train the network to classify each trace with their corresponding key value. This is the same principle as classify unwritten. We give photo with unwritten and the neural network guess which letter is written. Once the training is finished, we use the attack set to predict the key of the target device. The goal of the neural network is to guess the key with fewest trace as possible. In our previous work, we observed this and think. First, some channels are easier to attack than another. For example, power consumption is easier to attack than electromagnetic emission. 
Secondly, some devices are easier to attack than other. For example, some devices link more information than other. Third, some implementations are easier to attack than other. For example, implementation without countermeasure is easier to attack than implementation with countermeasure. First, our goal is to investigate if GAN can be used to translate trace one domain to another which is easier to attack. There already exists some related work. In the Wu and Pisek publication, author investigates the autoencoder capability to denoise and remove the effect of various hiding countermeasures. In their work, they use an autoencoder as preprocessing operation and the ASCAD database. ASCAD database that aim at providing a benchmark reference for the CSI community. This dataset was open source and proposed by the French NC. Our approach is different because we do not require noisy trace, but just trace from a domain that is easier to attack. We have a device to target. We can extract from this device a profiling set and an attack set. We also have another data set. We assume that domain B, described in blue, is easier to attack than domain A, described in red. In this context and with all this tool, an attacker can ask, how can I attack this device? We have investigated two other approaches in addition to the regular one. The first additional approach consists in using a GAN network. This approach is called translate attack. In this situation, the attacker can use the dataset from domain B to pre-train a network and use a GAN which learn to translate trace from domain A to domain B. After the training of the GAN, the attacker can use the translate trace and the pre-trained network to guess the key. The second additional approach consists in using a pre-trained model. This approach is called pre-trained attack. In this situation, the attacker can use the dataset from domain B to pre-train a network and directly use it with the attack set from domain A to guess the key. Now I will present you how is data generate. The GAN is composed of two steps, a discriminator and a generator. The goal of the discriminator is to determine if the data are fake or real. First, we give to the discriminator a couple of data. The couple of data can be one trace from domain A and plus a second trace from domain B. In this case, the discriminator must predict that it's real data. Otherwise, the couple of data can be the trace from domain A plus a second synthetic trace. In this case, the discriminator must predict that it was a fake data. For each batch, we first update the discriminator with the loss A. The loss A is a binary cross-entropy. The batch is the number of data C at the same time by the GAN. The goal of the generator is to success in following the discriminator by generating fake data. We give to the gener generator the trace from domain A as input and the trace from domain B as output. The GAN trained to translate trace from domain A to domain B. For each batch, we then update the generator with two loss A and B. The loss A allow the generator to know if it has deceived the discriminator. The loss B allows the generator to know if the data as generated is more or less similar to the data in domain B. We had just and tune two GAN architecture over a set of hyperparameters, SEGAN and PixTopix. SEGAN, which has been designed for speech enhancements, in more detail to denoise audio waveform.
and pixel-to-pixel -pixel design in the context of image translation with parallel dataset. We adjust and tune these two GAN architecture with different optimizer, activation function, patch size, and epoch. The optimizer is the optimization function used during the update of the way for the discriminator and the generator. The batch size is the number of data seen at the same time by the neural network. The epoch is the number of iterations done by the neural network after seeing all data. We select the best hyperparameter with two metrics, the SNR and the guessing entropy. The SNR is the ratio between the determ deterministic data dependent linkage and the remaining noise. It permits to show if the synthetic traits are realistic. Guessing entropy is the ranking of the key to guess in a list of possible key. It permits to know if the synthetic traits are more useful for other networks than the original trace. For the second, the best model was uh, an RMS probe as optimizer, TAN as activation function, a batch size equal to 128, and a number of epoch equal to 200. For the pix to pix the best model was a RMS probe as optimizer, TAN as activation function, a batch size limit to 64 due to the limitation of GPU memory, and a number of epoch equal to 200. We want to investigate if our approach works on several networks and is not specific to one network. We test our approach with three published networks that we referred as ASCAD, ZAID, and NOCO. ASCAD is a network when researchers made a deeper analysis to determine the good hyperparameter of the network. Recently, ZAID and all proposed a lighter architecture for such an attack. NoConv1 is, an, is another version of ZAID without convolutional layer. For the classical network, Haskad, ZAID, and NoConv1, we decide to train our network on 100k trace for the pre-trained pre -train attack and regular attack. We keep the same hyperparameter described and select by author in, the, in their paper. The epoch is equal to 100 and the batch size is equal to 128. We use the Cheese Whisperer platform with STM32 target to investigate trace translation. This choice allows to easily obtain measurement from different devices F0, F1, F2, and F4. On the right, you can see the STM32 platform with a probe that measures the electromagnetic emission. And we also have a probe that measures that measure the power consumption. First, we investigate the translation from EM to power. In this graph, we show the SNR evaluation for F2 EM translate to F2 power. I said I say previously, the SNR is the ratio between the deterministic data-dependent leakage and the remaining noise. On the left, we have the SNR graph from F to EM, from the domain A. In the middle, we have the SNR graph from trace translate. On the right, we have the SNR graph from F to power, from domain B. In all graphs, we have into the X axis the sample point into the y-axis the SNR value. We observe that the SNR value from F2 EM is lower than the SNR value from F2 power. We observe that the GAN retrieves the three main linkage position and the SNR value from trace translate higher than F2 EM but lower than F2 power. This graph shows the guessing entropy when targeting F2 EM. As I said previously, the guessing entropy is the ranking of the key to guess in a list of possible key. On the left, we have when we directly applied the pre-trained model 
as the right when using trace translation. In Bow Graph, we have different colors that represent the different network used ASCAD, ZIDE, and DOCONF, and different styles that represent the different source of training. In dotted line, the training with F2 power, in solid line, the training with F2EA. In Bow Graph, we have into the X axis the number of traces, into the Y axis the guessing entropy. We observe that the pre-train do not converge for this amount of training data. We observe the performance when using the trace translation is superior to the performance of directly applied a pre-train network. This graph shows the attack evaluation on F2EM with CPA. On the left, we have the performance of CPA on original trace. At the right, we have the performance of CPA on translate trace. In both graphs, we have into the X axis the number of traces, into the Y axis the correlation. We have the gray color that represents the wrong candidate and in the black color the correct key. In the original dataset, CPA found the correct key with 30 traces. On the synthetic translate trace, CPA found the correct key with 15 traces. We observe that the performance of CPA is improved with the trace translation. This is a sum up of the translation from EAM to Power. Secondly, we investigate the cross device translation. In this graph, we show the SNR evaluation for F1 Power translate to F2 Power. On the left, we have the SNR graph from F1 Power. On the middle, the SNR graph from Trace translate. On the right, the SNR graph from F2 power. As previously, we have into the X axis the sample point, into the Y axis the SNR value. We observe that the linkage position from F1 power are different and F2 power of are different. And F2 power has higher SNR value than F1 power. In this context, the GAN will translate a small to a larger SNR. We observe that GAN network successful retrieve the free main linkage position of F2 power and provide higher SNR value than F1 power. This graph shows the guessing entropy when targeting F1 power. On the left, we have when we directly apply ProTrain model at the right when using trace translation. In both graph, we have different colors that represent the different network use, ASCAD, ZAID, and DOCONF, and different styles that represent the different source of training. In dotted line, the training with F2 power. In solid line, the training with F1 power. In both graph, we have into the X axis the number of traces into the y-axis the guessing entropy. We observe that the best performance when using the ProTrain model is obtained with the channel F1 power. We observe that the performance of ASCAD, NOCONF and ZAID with the channel F2 power can be improved by using, by using trace translation. Finally, we observe similar performance when we use ProTrain network and trace translation. This graph shows the attack evaluation on F1 power with CPA. On the left, we have the performance of CPA on original dataset, and at the right, we have the performance of CPA on translate trace. In both graphs, we have into the X axis the number of traces, into the Y axis the correlation. We still have the gray color that represents the wrong candidate, and in the black color, the correct key. We observe that the performance of CPA is improved with trace translation. Because on the synthetic translate trace, CPA found the correct key with two traces, whereas on the original trace, CPA does not succeed. succeed. This is the sum up of the first cross device translation. 
Third, we investigate other scenario of cross device translation. In this graph, we show the scenario evaluation for F2 power translate to F4 power. On the left, we have the scenario graph from F2 power. On the middle, the scenario graph from trace translate. And on the right, the scenario graph from F4 power. We observe that F2 power has higher SNR value than F4 power. This is the context when the GAN will translate a large to smaller SNR. We observe that GAN successfully retrieve the free main linkage position of F4 power and provide higher SNR value than F4 power. This graph shows the guessing entropy when targeting F2 power. On the left, we have when directly applied pre-trained model, at the right, when using trace translation. In both graphs, we have into a dotted line the training on F4 power, and in solid line the training on F2 power. We observe that the performance of Haskad, NoConf, and LAID with the channel F4 power can be improved by using trace translation. We observe that the best performance is obtained by using the trace translation with ZAID. The graph shows the attack evaluation on F2 power. We observe that the performance of CPA is decreased when using the synthetic translate trace because it's univariant attack and it only considers one SNR peak at a time. This is a sum up of the second cross device translation. We conclude that when regular approach fail due to a lack of data, and if Perl dataset is available, trace translation help. Our dataset and all the script will be open source soon. In our future work, we want to investigate if GAN can translate protect trace into unprotect trace, and we also want to investigate if GAN can work with Unpel dataset. Thank you for your intention.